Hey everybody, it's Ollie from Flight Comp, and this is the Optimus Sport uh, build video part two. And in this video, we're going to be installing the flap servos into the center panel. And real quick, I'll just give you a look at the uh, Optimus center panel. It is a hollow molded uh, carbon part, very lightweight. And just some of the features on it real quick, it does have a pre-installed uh, DB9 connector and it has um, ballast provision if you choose to uh, buy the uh, ballast kit for the electric version of the Optimus. Those two screws right there are how the ballast mounts and it has tubes in each side of the wing to accept the ballast. Uh, servo wiring is already uh, run through the center panel the connector here for the uh, servo and then there's a lead that goes uh, out here for the tips again extremely high quality um, really good finish we'll just uh, move forward with installing the servos uh, in this particular model I'm going to be putting in um, some KST X10 minis for the flaps and this is a good opportunity to sort of explain how I um, do my uh, flap servo in install typically on these kinds of models. So I'll just go over that real quick. Alright, so the first thing I've done is I've made up t two control horns. We have two identical control horns. The distance from the uh, st uh, servo arm screw to the uh, pivot point on the clevis is eight millimeters this is the uh, linkage that's supplied with the kit the the rod and the clevises I've basically adjusted them all the way in and ensured that they are uh, identical in length the servo arm is basically laying horizontal and I've used a, a servo tester to drive the servo to its maximum position uh, this would be full uh, flap down and uh, basically what I did was drive the servo to the maximum position and, and full flap down and then attach the servo arm so that it is horizontal in that position so what I want is when I have 90 degrees of flaps, uh, all the forces are being transferred through the linkage and against the output shaft bearings in case of the servo. Okay, so if, if we had a situation where the servo arm was like this uh, with full 90 degrees flap, de flap down, the load would actually be transferred to the gear train of the servo and all that load would be um, basically on a few a few uh, teeth on the gear train in the servo so I think that uh, having the servo in the horizontal position at full flaps uh, just is a, a safer uh, setup and will probably keep your uh, uh, save your um, gear train in case you drag a flap or something like that. Um, beyond that, I have the servo in the RC Solutions frame, and I have uh, just a piece of plastic, you know, between the servo and the frame to keep any glue from getting to the servo. Uh, sometimes I'll also actually uh, wax up the servo with mold release and use that method instead of the plastic. And I actually do have a video showing that method if you just click on the how to uh, playlist. Anyway, so I have two servos set up identical. I've, I've ensured that the, both the horns are identical in length, and when they're both in the full flat position, they are identical in their position in that they're both uh, horizontal. So if I were to line up these servo arms, you can see that they're on the same plane. One's not up or down further, further than the other. And that's basically it. Uh, I've also shortened the leads up a little bit just to save a little bit of weight so basically these are ready to install into the center panel now figuring out your geometry to get full flap can be a little bit tricky but I found 
using this method of installing the servos uh, with the flaps in the 90 degree or full down position uh, nine times out of ten will get will get me um, the throw that I need uh, for the model but you want to keep in mind that you want to try to use the shortest arm possible to get the throw that you need that way you're getting the most power and precision out of your servo you know you could easily just put a bigger arm on here and get plenty of throw but you're what you won't be utilizing all the travel in the servo and you're gonna lose precision and uh, some of the torque in the servo so let's, uh, let's move on to um, actually installing these into the wing okay so basically before we install the servo we just want to take a little bit of sandpaper and scuff up the uh, servo bay to ensure that we get a good bond between the uh, skin of the wing and the uh, the servo tray that's holding the servo down so I'll go ahead and do that alright I've scuffed up the uh, servo bays and what I'm going to do next is actually um, drop the servos in here with the linkage uh, I will be keeping the uh, linkage on the servos and just slipping it in and then clipping it onto the uh, control horn in the wing so we'll do that on both sides and then basically ready to uh, mix up some resin and um, install these permanently so here is my epoxy it's uh, about 24 hour cure epoxy uh, MGS works uh, this is actually uh, I think aero epoxy or poly epoxy um, it's uh, a little thickened with um, some cabosil or aerosol and a little bit of micro balloons so it's not super thick but it's not going to be um, really runny so it's like kind of like the consistency of honey I'm just going to put a little bit of this in the uh, servo bays and then I'll get the servos in and um, get the flaps set up and weight down the servos and then we'll just uh, wait for everything everything to uh, dry up I'll give it uh, actually a solid 24 hours to cure before I uh, mess with it at all so let's get our servos in alright so I have the uh, servos in place uh, there's epoxy underneath the trays um, they are installed in the uh, full flap down position and I've just used some masking tape as you can see here to uh, ensure to uh, hold the flaps in the full down position and I've made sure that I have uh, equal amount of uh, full flap down so that both the uh, flaps line up so that tape will stay there till the uh, servo servo trays are fully cured up and this way I know that maximum um, travel in the servo I get the amount of flap that I want and what I'm gonna just what I'm gonna do is I, I just made sure that everything was square that the linkage was, is square to the hinge line and I'm just gonna stick some weights like this uh, onto the flaps and let them cure uh, for 24 hours and then we can come back and see what kind of uh, movement we get out of the uh, flaps alright well the flap servos are done they're installed and I just finished up um, putting these uh, carbon fiber they're actually a row of cell foam with carbon fiber uh, they're laminated with carbon fiber I should say they're just supports to stiffen up the uh, servo base so I installed those I just have I just scuffed up the ends with some sandpaper and used some uh, goop to uh, tack them down to the wing and then down here I just have a block of Roacel foam that I sanded to fill the gap between the um, servo and the uh, cross brace so anyway those are installed on both sides and then the next thing I have to do is just put the uh, servo covers on so I'm gonna go ahead and install the servo covers but I ran into a small problem and that is that I'm not really getting enough uh, up travel you see here that's the most up travel that I can get in the flaps and I want a little more um, when I mix my flaps to ailerons I want to get a little more travel and just looking into it, I realized that the uh, wiper, you can see the uh, wiper here, is really uh, wide. So that when the flap retracts, the wiper actually hits the subspar. So what I've done on this flap 
is I've just sanded the edge down a little bit and to do that I just used a piece of uh, hardwood with some sandpaper glued to it so I sanded probably two millimeters off the uh, wiper and you can see when I move this one up we get quite a bit of travel and then this other one I haven't sanded yet and that's all the up travel we get so I don't know if this is uh, I didn't notice this in a few other Optimuses that I had built so maybe this isn't a production problem maybe it's just this model or maybe they changed production I don't know um, anyway it's not a big deal to sand the wiper down so I've done this one already and then I'm just gonna go ahead and sand uh, the wiper on this one so the servo covers are now in place uh, I have them held down with some masking tape and I've secured the uh, covers with uh, canopy glue it's basically a, a glue for plastics it dries clear and you can clean it up with uh, water and it's not very permanent so you can pry up under the servo cover and pop it off if you had to I have both of those done and then the next thing I'm going to move on to is um, actually mounting the uh, motor mount into the fuselage pod.